here on Public Exposure, we are investigating the mortgage foreclosure crisis, and crisis it is. Let's see how we can get out of it. Howard Bono is with the Financial Revival Group, myfinancialrevival.com. Howard, welcome back. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, let's get right to this big policy issue. The, a decade of stimulus yields big debt. That's right on your website, by the way. Does it really? Well, so far what we've seen is we've seen all of these government programs that are really designed to stimulate our economy or to stimulate this or to stimulate that. It's really an, kind of an extension of the tax code. The tax code is 12,000 mm -hmm. pages or something. And geared to help those who made so much money off of it. I frankly cannot tell the difference between Paulson and Geithner. Because they all came from from Goldman, Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs, yeah. yeah, they did. All right, let's go to a Bloomberg uh, article that, uh, a column actually that you uh, talked about, and it's uh, the decade of fiscal stimulus yields nothing but debt. This is according to Caroline Baum. And she's got, she says this, the Budget Control Act of 2011 is you, they are required, well, they saved $917 billion over 10 years. Is that right? So what? <laughs> so, okay, so Isn't let's... Isn't that enough well, money? Well, let's break it down. Right now, the federal government brings in about 2.2... This year, this fiscal year that ends at the... Well, Friday or whenever the end of September mm. is. Yeah. They're going to bring in about $2.2 billion. They're going to spend $3.8 trillion. $2.2 billion, $3.8 trillion. So we're going we're gonna to borrow from China, England, and Japan primarily $1.6 trillion dollars to make that budget work. You know, 40 cents out of every dollar the government send, spends is borrowed from another country. So we're going to borrow all of that money and then over the course of the next 10 years we're going to cut out 90 billion dollars a year. So instead of borrowing 1.6, call it 1.5 that we're going to borrow. Huh. Well, but we're going to be okay, though, because there's a bipartisan committee. This is part of the, uh, of the Budget Control Act. Bipartisan committee is going to have to cut $1.2 trillion over 10 years. Over 10 years. And these, of course, are the same people who can't, couldn't cut anything before, so that's why the, the laughing graphic up there, I mean, is it just a joke on us? Yeah, pretty much, because if you went and looked at the way baseline budgeting works in the federal government, let's say they spent, let's, let's just use simple round numbers. Let's say that they were going to spend $1,000 this year on their budget. Mm -hmm. So next year what happens is they're going to spend a hundred, you know, a, a, a thousand seventy. Let's say they get a seven percent increase. So they're going to spend a thousand seven hundred next year, right? Okay. Thousand seventy. I'm sorry. Let me get my, my numbers seven. straight. Okay. A thousand seventy. So if we were going to cut th that that back down to a thousand twenty instead of a thousand seventy, that's a cut. Really? Even though we're spending more money than we spent last year. So it's like going to your kid and saying, your kid says, I, "Dad, I get ten bucks a week for an allowance, and I want fifteen." And you say, well, how about 12? And he says, you can't do that. That's a cut. You're cutting my allowance. That's the way politics and, and that financing works. Mm -hmm. So they're going to cut $1.2 trillion out of something that's even more than we're already spending now. The other point that I really want to make is I was watching on C-SPAN the other day, that committee. There are 12 of them. They sit up in this big, huge area, all 12 of them sitting like this, they don't even look at each other. How are they? I envisioned them sitting around a big table and talking with each other about how they're going to solve the problem. They're talking at each other. They don't talk with each other. And they don't even look at each other when they're talking because of the way that they've structured the room. I don't see how they get anything done. Hmm. You know, I, I certainly would have changed the, the format of the way that they're doing things. Let's go back to the Bloomberg article the, uh, and, and to the, the first quote, the, the, the next series of quotes. Who can forget the CBO's 2001 estimate of a 10-year $5.7 trillion budget surplus? We do seem to be relying on the Congressional Budget Office a lot, and it apparently has proven it's not reliable. Not at all. Not huh. at all. So it, it is a political organization. And so, depending on who's in power, you know, the whole game back in Washington, D.C. is about who's in power and whose influence gets garnered by an individual. Because no matter the CBO, for example, they work for whoever happens to be in power at that particular point in time. And so... Who's in power now? <laughs> that is a good question. There are, I think that there's a bunch of puppeteers that are out in the wings that are pulling the strings here. And I'll leave it up to your... 
your viewers here to determine who those people might Let's be. Let's go back to the Bloomberg article. Uh, the next quote from the Bloomberg article itself is, Medicare outlays have risen 9% a year for the last 30 years in a period of stable demographics. The automatic spending cuts outlined in the Budget Act would limit reductions in Medicare expenditures to no more than 2% a year. So already, just, we're going to be backwards because of that. Oh, absolutely, because what happens is the way that, that um, Medicare spends money, it's all broken down and the money's given to the states and the states deal with it. So all the federal government's doing is they're saying, we're going to cut back the amount of money that we're distributing for Medicare and the states are going to have to figure out what they do. So the, so the debt's still going to be there. Oh, it's going to continue to increase. Huh. So their trick for Medicare is they just pay the doctors less. So you're seeing more and more doctors that won't accept Medicare patients. You're seeing more and more doctors that are going to a situation where they won't even accept insurance payments. Because you could get a doctor visit for 20 or $25 if you just pay them on the spot mm -hmm. because they don't have to deal with all the, bu the bureaucracy. We've got a minute left in this segment and we've got to solve the tax code. Let's go back to the Bloomberg article. Okay. And we could do that in a minute. Uh, the tax, current tax code is burdensome, inefficient, and costly to administer. You know, tell us something we don't know. Mm -hmm. Former Treasury Secretary Paul O'Neill says it's cost the Treasury an estimated $800 billion annually divided equally among uh, administrative costs and uncollected revenue. Basically, he says flat tax, national sa uh, savings ta or sales tax, something different. Hallelujah. <laughs> wouldn't that be simple? You know, it w it, wouldn't it be it's great to happen. be able to? It really should, but what happens is they can't do that because the power in the government is in the tax code. So they can give favor to whoever they want to give favor to, and they can penalize people that they want to penalize. They can control. Uh, uh, they can control your activity by how you get tax breaks. All right, so the power is in the tax code. Finally, we've got it right here on Public Exposure. We're going to continue on with our investigation of the mortgage foreclosure crisis. 